Hello everyone. A warm welcome to our next course, which is Chrome Developer Tool for Beginners. This is something which I always wanted to do where anybody who is coming new to web development or anything related to browser, how do we he troubleshooted? How do we learn? So basically in this course, we will have a look at uh, Chrome Developer Tools, which you can go from three doors, more tools and developer tools. So, so once you click on it, the developer tools open, right? And so in this course, we will talk about and look at each of these tabs. What does, what do we do with it in elements one? What do we do in source one? What do we do in network one, console, memory, performance, and white house security. So all of these tabs. And, uh, and we'll try to make sure that we understand their basics and uh, once you're done with the course so that you are pretty much comfortable with it so without wasting further much time let's get going and let's start with the basics
Okay, so we have created a very simple page which is uh, which is loading two files. One is a style sheet, style.css, another is a my file JS. All it does is it has an H1 element, some list, basic one, then click below to begin your journey and uh, then it has a button right and button we have this event okay so this is pretty straightforward one there's nothing fancy right and when we say that okay this at for what we have in our css is first is uh, uh, we have as a one second we have as a body body tag for which we have defined that this has to be the color let me just bring it here so now you can see that for body we are saying background is this s1 has to be of this color paragraph has to be this if i over over the list over over the list the background color should become red for this right and uh, in javascript all i'm saying is on click you do alert your update uh, right uh, what I am using to run this local server is uh, basically uh, what we call it as a live server. You can add it as an extension, as a add-on to your VS Code, right? And then you can also run it. So if you look here, so here if you go to live server, so this is the live server which I have installed. And in case you want to start run it, all you need to do is Control Shift P. And do a live server all shoot. Okay, so now maybe let's look at this. So this is how our uh, website, not a very great one, right? It's a very uh, basic one, and but this will help us in, in in understanding how do we troubleshoot things, how do we debug things, and if you look at this, the hover is also taking effect, right? So our website which we want to troubleshoot is set. So let's now open our console, okay? And uh, let me just reload it so that everything becomes clear. So if I just reload it, so now if you look here, it network it shows what all files are loaded. These two are others are websocket. Let's just ignore it. So our focus right now is this elements, okay? So what this does is it shows the complete HTML file for uh, whatever is displayed. For example, body, where, whichever whichever tag you will click on, that will get selected. For example, body. This is H1. This is UL. Under this, we have list. Right. So it's, it's basically this is M. And if you look at on the right side, it it automatically selects what all what all CSS is applied to it. For example, style CSS one background color is this text line is center. There can be many multiple CSS, but some of it will be applied to your element. How do we find out that? So what you can do is go to this computed one, right? And now you can see that for this body, the padding is this border margin, and then you can see clearly the color, right? What is the background color? And you can also see from where it is coming. Right. Because there can be multiple style sheets from where they are coming and some are inherited. For example, if I just click here, these are all the inherited one. Okay. And these are all coming from the style sheets, the basic one which is inserted. Okay. And so we now, and then we also have uh, something like uh, the rendered fonts and all the details. Now, for example, what if you want to select any of it? So what you can do is you click here and let's say I want to see what is happening with learn. So learn is getting selected, which is a lie, right? And the style is here is there is, there is only text line which is center and that is coming from body, not from a writer, right? And for example, if I want to see a H1, so for H1, the color is coming from set, right? And what I can do is, if I go here and if I click here, if I want to see how it will look like if I change it. So for example, I can make it red, this, and I can, you know, increase, decrease its gradients, colors, 
everything. So whatever you want to do, you can do that from here. If you want to change change uh, alignment, right? You can let me make it like this so that I want to make it as uh, left aligned, right? So you can see how it looks, right? Uh, let's just keep it center. Let's say I want to have uh, font size as uh, font size of 30 pixels. So now it is increased 40 pixels, then also it is increased. So you can play around with its style, right? And uh, then, for example, if I go to accessibility, I can also see this in another key from where it is coming and what are its elements. Okay, so that's how basically you can check what all styles are assigned to it and, and how you can modify and try changing them. Now let's say that this one, I want to modify the text also. So what you can do is do a right click, go to edit as HTML. I say, let me just write anything, right? And I can just see how it looks like. Right? What if I want to see that? How do this this node I, I can select? It? Go to copy and copy JS path. And then if you go to console and you can write here this control V, you can see it is already selecting this, right? And uh, we'll we cover console in detail, but this is how you select this element. Okay. Now going back again to elements and if I select this, right? And uh, if I right click this again and I say copy, copy styles, then all the CSS which is applied to uh, this H1 element will be shown, copied. You can see here this color is this, text line, everything is copied, right? And uh, let me just close it. And for example, if you have to, you know, inspect this element. How you can do is do a right click and say inspect element, which is like control shift I, right? And it again open the same thing, right? It is already selected. So now let's, let's, so we now understood, okay, this is how you can, because the overall, this is nothing but how everything is at the end is an HTML uh, tag. So that's how you work with them. Now, for example, let's, let's look at, uh, this unordered list which has these elements right so what i can do is let's say if i want to add one more list so i can do a copy or i can direct directly do a duplicate so you can see there is one more added right i can also do a hide element and this is hidden right you can see this is hidden but the space is this is hidden right and uh, what if uh, now, if you must be noticing that uh, if I hover over this, it is it is turning into red, right? And if I go here and look into style of CSS and resource, we will go into source a bit more once into the next lesson. But for timing, why it becomes red is because I have I have a CSS li column hover as background will be red right and how do we trigger this is what you can do is for example this is the element which is selected i don't need to hover it right i need to hover it to trigger this but another way out is you can click here right with this as selected you can trigger this element state hovers and now when that state is reached you can see that how it is becoming red background color is the light hover. and if i go here this also you will see that okay this is the reason the style dot says that it is becoming red. Correct. So that's how basically uh, you are able to uh, trigger different uh, stuff, right? So now, so we see how do we trigger this? How do we edit an element? And in fact, you can add also once you say, if I just say edit as HTML, right? So you can add whatever you feel like. Right. And now let's say that uh, you want to add a, you want to suppose, uh, let me first select this, right? So you can filter these properties also. You can say that where is text used, so you can filter those. 
So text align, you can clearly see those 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 filters you can apply, right? And same goes for computed one also. But here also you can have a list, and it will already filter based on list. Right, and uh, then you can also kind of uh, you can add your class also. For example, if I want to add a new class here, I can add uh, any new class here. So that is it, right? So so that's how basically, and you can see the color is also changed, right? So you can play around with the styles. You can debug it. You can check from where it is coming. You can edit it, right? and uh, you can also uh, what you can do is you can also delete stuff you can hide stuff also okay one more thing what you can do is for example i want to see what part of my css and all that stuff is being used right so for that what you can do is you can have uh, oh, click on control shift p you can open a coverage show coverage okay and if i just click on reload right then it tells me that okay in my style these these parts are covered let me just uh, maybe what i will do is let me modify something maybe i can have something like uh, not this we can add a p1 let's add something like p1 right and just save and then we see in style.css right let me just then do it again this is from the command palette also you can go from here also run command control shift p in ios it should be command shift p right you can then here if i double click this right one second Yes, if I, I don't know why this double does not work, but if I double click this file, I can see that my body, these all parts have been used, but li has, has not been as well as p1 has not been. But if I just say move here, this turns as blue, right? Why it has been used. So in our elements tab as of now, what we learned about was that how do we select an element? How do we add uh, different classes, right? How do we kind of uh, filter them? How do we see which uh, which which style is added to which element? How can we basically copy that ID where which that element refers to? We can copy the styles as well as you can hide them. So that's that's a bit about our elements. Now. In our next chapter or video, we will move towards our sources tab where we will understand about how how do we handle the code, how do we, you know, let's say if I click here and how do we this this message is getting triggered. For example, if I just say okay, now you need to troubleshoot it, we'll look at that. Okay. So now in this uh, lesson, we will look at uh, the source tab. And before that, uh, let us just look at quickly at the code changes which I have done. Rather than just simply having a, you know, when you click on this file button, right? Rather than just showing an alert message, apart from it, I have defined a function nested call to which I am passing a variable my count and it is returning its count, right? And then again, I am showing another message, right? So idea is to showcase you the different features of debugging using this and uh, for the timing let's just say that uh, let me just close this and if i just click here you complete one exercise you complete seven exercises now let's just try to troubleshoot it that i want to see how it is happening okay so for that what we will do is first if you press ctrl shift i you this panel is opened and it has three parts one is on left hand side is a kind of a hierarchy of your files how they are placed then you have in the center is the window where different files will be opened right it will be like this 
and on right side you see there is a different kind of breakpoints. We'll look at them. We'll look at this. So this is how it is. Things are organized, right? Now, let's say that when I click on this button, it automatically run this code, and I know that this function is being called, right? So, so how do I stop the code in the debugger? So the first thing which I can do is I can simply put a breakpoint by clicking here. If it turns blue, it is a there's a breakpoint is active. If you click again, it gets debugged. It's it get deleted, or you can create a breakpoint using right click and add breakpoint. For the time being, we'll just say add breakpoint, right? And if I click here, what does it say? Pause then debug, right? And the code has stopped. Okay. Now let's just first look at these three, these these some of these buttons. This one means you just want to execute it. You don't want to debug. This means you want to debug it, but you will you want to step over each call. For example, if I click here, it goes to next one. It calls alert. Okay. Now here, yes, here it is a function call, nested call, where this my count is being passed. So one thing which I can do is either I want to go inside debug this function, or I just want to skip over. So for example, I want to skip over. So that's what this step over function does, and you are able to see this message, right? And if I just say presses, that's okay. Now, let's again look at it and let's see how does this step in step out work. So if I now click here and it goes again here and I just want to step over this, okay? Now I want to debug this, so I go inside this one F11, so it goes here. Right. For example, now I feel that everything looks okay. I don't want to debug it. I want to come out of this. So that's where you have step up. Right. So that's how you basically do this step by step. And then you can just simply say click click on resume and everything is done. So these are the buttons basically which you use to you know move to towards different codes. Okay. So now since we have seen how how these different uh, options are there right and now what you can do is that for example you can place multiple breakpoint i can place a breakpoint here here and here okay so for example if i do this right now it stops here i say resume message is coming and again it goes to here right and then again step by step it will start it will stop at every point every breakpoint and it will show me everything right but let's say you don't you said that okay this breakpoint is okay rest i think a lot okay i just want to proceed i don't want to stop right so what you can do is you you see this there's a down arrow the you just click on it and you hold the mouse press button right and then you click on the second option so it it basically goes through everything so what it does is it basically uh, skips through rest of the breakpoints Right. So another option is, for example, you don't have these breakpoints. You just have first breakpoint, and you say, "I want to debug." So it comes here, but you don't want to, you want to skip everything, and you want to directly the code to directly go here. Just click here and do a continue to here. That's it. And first message come line number three, and it stops. So that's how you can basically skips through. The, the few lines and the codes and you can directly go here. Okay, sometimes what you need to do is, for example, you have executed everything and you are at these somewhere in between, but you want to restart it, right? You want to go to the beginning and start again this whole function. So what you can do is uh, go here on the call stack to a restart frame, right? This is one way you can do it. So all I need to do is restart frame and goes to the beginning. Right, and it starts again. That's how you basically uh, the starts the execution of this function. And what you see here is, let's just focus on as of now on call stack. So this is like in what order this this function is being called. For example, first is you see there's a button in our index.html which has on click event which call this, and that's where it comes in. Right, and um, this this is called as uh, the trace, and you can also do a right click copy stack trace. So it basically what it does is you can see there's a stack trace is copied, right? 
and uh, then you can basically uh, kind of uh, move through your uh, you know check through troubleshoot your is issues using calls check that how the calls have happened and where probably an issue can lie right so let me just step over to next function and just show you how do you check the variable value one is you can see there is already a variable variable value coming my count is equal to one and other ways you can just hover over it you will see its value or you can just copy this variable you can go here it shows that another way is if you look at this scope there's a local scope where you see this my count variable one and you can modify it from here also right if you just double click you can modify it very simple right so let me just say okay okay that's fine that's that's okay okay so now we see one type of a breakpoint there are multiple type of a breakpoints which we will see so one is the this is simple breakpoint right and there is if you do a right click for example if i do a right click here there is a conditional breakpoint so it, this breakpoint will be triggered based on certain condition it will not be um, trigger like uh, always so I, what I can do is if my count is equal to seven right double seven then only trigger it and I know that one is it will be one here then it will call this method nested calls one plus six is seven it will get triggered and now you can see this it is yellow orange right orange is kind not yellow that it will be like conditional so if I just click here and let me just remove this so now it stops here because my count value is seven, right? Now if I edit it, right click, edit, I say if this value is six, then only stop. And now if I click here, it doesn't stop. So which is the way we want them to be, right? So that's how these are conditional breakpoints. One is a simple breakpoint. Another is a breakpoint is a, a DOM breakpoint, right? For example, let me just first do one thing. Uh, let me just move this. Let me just. Uh, this is a list under which we have this element. I'm just copying it, right? And copying the path. Okay. And what I will do is if you click on this button, I will remove this entry, the, the first one, right? So what I will do is I will have something like this dot remove method okay so i'm selecting it and then the remove method is there if you look at this source this is a document dot query selector select this path this element and then remove it if i click this button right but before that i want that in case anything happens to this list uh, the, i should have a breakpoint triggered so what i can do is first let me delete this or i can disable also right click disable it is disabled right and this is a different one and if i can disable blue one it will be light blue so these are all disabled points if i enable it right then they become enable and i can i can see these two breakpoints under this i can also enable disable from here. okay so now let me disable them what i will do is i say that in case this unordered list which is this complete break on subtree modification so if in case anything under this tree modifies you break you stop or in case any attribute modifies then you stop in case there is a node removal then also you stop so i say sub tree modification so it becomes blue right dom breakpoint right so if you go here you can see there's a dom breakpoint in your one now if i click here you completed one exercise now it stops automatically and you can see that paused on sub tree modification you will descendant li remove automatically okay so this is the dom breakpoint if i just say okay you can see this uh, this is already deleted okay now sometimes you want that whenever you click this button what is happening which event what is mouse click event what is happening can i listen to this event and can i have trigger a breakpoint yes so if you look here there's a even listener breakpoint and under it, you have different things, different events, animation canvas. For us, it is, we'll take mouse, we'll say click. So whenever I click, let it trigger a breakpoint. So if I just click here, so it triggers a breakpoint automatically. It says this button type on click event. And if I just 
executed, then it also automatically triggers my other breakpoints, right? So that's how it basically triggers it. Let me just first delete all these and show you one more thing. Break on and subtract. Okay. So another thing is basically is for example, um, what you want is that you want to trigger a breakpoint when this function is called nested call. And you don't know when it will be called, but it is globally available because I have upload or loaded this file via index.html. So what I can do in console is you can say debug nested call. Okay, whenever this is called, you debug it. So I just click here. And uh, you see, it automatically gets triggered, nested call. I did not put any breakpoint. It got triggered automatically, right? Paused on debugged function. It automatically tells you that, okay, this is how things are, right? Okay, good. Let me just reload it because the entries are deleted, right? And now let's say that, um, Another thing which we have not seen is you can also modify these code. For example, I can say my count is equal to two and press save. Simple press save. And if I click here, you can see you completed two exercises. The value gets modified, right? But if I just do a refresh and you see this value is lost, right? So there are two ways around it, right? How do you preserve these changes? Okay, so what you can do is one way is you say that you click on this file system, right? And you add your Chrome folder, right? This one, Chrome developer tools folder to the workspace, you say allow. And now whatever changes you will make here. So let me just close all. And whatever changes you make, for example, I make it to two, I make it completed one, two, three, right? And uh, here also I write something and I press save. So whatever changes you make here, right? You can see them that they will automatically are, let me just read this breakpoint. That one, two, three, eight, everything is getting reflected, right? And if you look at, if you just press the refresh also, still the changes are there, right? Why? Because the code is, it is directly modifying your file system. If I look at this, so you can actually, in fact, modify everything, the developer console. So anything, everything you can modify, right? And uh, one important other thing which I wanted to showcase is, uh, one is this, not one, many, many, two. Let's, let's look at this snippet, right? So in case you want to store this code, in the browser, right? So you, what you can do is you click here, you know, you go to here snippets. Okay, let me go back again. Snippets, and then you click on new snippet and you paste your code, press save, right? Or you can do a right click, rename my samples, right? And uh, or maybe we just want to store this, for example, console.log, mm, hello right and now you want to run it so what you can do is either you can press control enter right or it will console log hello right or you can come here and run this so these are like uh, multiple snippets uh, you can store for uh, for your reference in the browsers okay then, for example, if I go back again to file system, right? And if I go here, let me close this. And let's say if I change this, right? And I have changed uh, this also, right? Or in fact, I added another function also. Let's just assume, right? I want to see what all changes I have done right now without before saving. So what you can do is you can go from here, more tools and changes. You can clearly see in function, there is you have added this, then you added this, then you added these. So it also tracks those also, right? So basically at any point of time, you are uh, 
you are checking, you know, making some changes, trying to check what has been done. So you can use this changes tab also, right? Now, let's say that I want to remove it. Let me remove this folder from workspace. So let's say that uh, rather than having the whole workspace here, I just want to make some changes, try out things and let those changes persist also when I reload. And if I later want it to merge with my changes, I'll do it. So what you can do is, for example, if I just uh, go to page and I want to see if what happens if my count is three and I just press save. And if I just refresh, my count is again two, right? How do I make sure those my temporary changes persist? So for that, what you can do is go to overrides, select the folder. Uh, if I select Tom developer tools and I say allow, right? Now, if I just say uh, maybe three, right? And uh, now, because now it is done with violet, so right now, if I just press refresh, right, so it is now three. If I just change it to five, right, and uh, hold on, and I press save, and uh, if I just press refresh, my count is five. But if you look at the back end code, it is still two. So, how it is doing is it is an override folder which it creates inside this right where you can see my count file okay so that is normally which you can use to to sometimes check your chummy changes and then uh, uh, kind of uh, if you think they are okay then you can merge them so, so this is we have come to this source tab end of the things right end of the lesson where we have looked at trace scopes breakpoint listeners source codes, how do we debug and other things. So now without wasting further much time, let's move on to the next lesson, which is related to the next tab, which is console. And then we might look into network or from application also. Hello everyone. In our previous uh, lessons, we have covered elements, sources, and now in this, we will plan to cover console. So like sources, console is also very important. So this is like, uh, you know, uh, a REPL where you can write your JavaScript code, you can run it, you can, you can make, you can check how it looks, right? And primarily in console, normally, for example, uh, let's look at our code. So, so normally developers, what they do is they, they kind of log some stuff when something is run. Right. For example, here it is console.log is being used, right? Let's just look at it, what it does. So for example, if in sources you go, you will see console.log is being logged in a nested call, which is being called an on-click event. Let me just click here. Okay, okay, and this is done. So but what happens? So anything which a developer wants to process is or wants to log is logged here. If you look at here. There are four messages. So this is the one which was which came from our trees completed one, two, three nested call. If we look at here, this is the same, right? And so that we, you know, developers can have different kind of logging messages. And on left hand side, what you see is there is four messages is like for everything. Then in case you want to see only errors, you can use this filter, warnings, info, right? Whatever we have lost logged and user messages if any right and in user messages these are these are like uh, the locations from where those messages are coming for example my file.js is one message which is coming from here and another message is coming from live road so these are the five different ways to see the message right and uh, you can if you want to clear it you can clear it using clear console and if you want to increase the size just control plus okay and in case you want to filter it you can filter that also for example if i just refresh right and i click here so you see there are two messages and if i want to filter for click 
only click will come if i just say rea then those will get filtered right and then 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 that that's how basically the whole uh, logging happens and you can view those logs now you can also preserve the logs in which there is a reload or something right if i just say preserve log and if i do an f5 right you will see that this log is still there the previous one and similarly there are other options while for example you can log stm the the those xhr ajax request also right and you can do enable auto complete from history also right so let's just try to uh, uh, while we are in console let's try to look at how does uh, this console works okay so for example if you just want to log any messages you just press console and you will see what all different methods are available for example i just press enter so there is error info log warning count there are n number of error the methods which are available that's how you can which you can use in your code to put kind of a breakpoint not breakpoints the log checkpoints in your case for example if you just want to log a message to the console you can just say hello one two three and it is logged hello one two three simple and uh, for example let's say there's a error there is an array not error array array of salary right and uh, which is like which has objects so as like month as a uh, jan and uh, salary as a uh, thousand okay let's say there is this one object then there is another then there is another so there are this array of three objects now you want to log them so one way is you just say console dot log salary right so it will just log this array object and you have to drill down to right and another way is to make it more uh, meaningful and you know beautiful is console dot table and you just say salary so you see it has index is one column month and salary so it's just much better readable and all right and now for example uh, so so you want some let's say let me just clear it so one way of clearing is this control l another way is console dot clear so it clears it uh, due to preserve log okay yeah so once again let me just do this and now we run this console dot clear so it clears it right now let's see that okay in case we want to log a message which is an error how it will look like we want it to stand out so what i will do is we'll say console dot log console dot error test error it, it gets shown in red if you say console dot warning test uh, maybe let's say test warning so uh, warn sorry you have it in yellow so in case if you click here it will show that test warning if you click here it shows test error. if you click here it shows everything in the file using the file right it is mentioning it as others because we are using this REPL right and then what you can do is uh, once you have an error let's say sometimes uh, you want to log a certain set of messages in a group let's say you have one function call you want to log that messages under one function group and then there's another function then you want to log those messages under another group so how do you do that so what you do is you say console dot uh, group uh, group was let's say g1 right and then you say console dot log hello I'm, I'm i'm imagining i'm inside a function so console dot error error right so these are these were thrown from a, a these were thrown from one function okay and i am logging it as under g1 function name 
let's say there is another one which is like uh, G2 right and uh, that's how those are thrown so what if you press enter you see this so there are two groups G1 G1 has hello hello and error right so you can use these what if I let's say let, let me do that what if I just use this right and uh, I want to log that uh, let me close this child that uh, I will just so it will say on click event right and uh, I just say group end right and let's not have it as console we say console dot warn and we say console dot uh, error so we are logging two messages just for our tracking and now what I will do is in case there is this function is also called we will log that also right and then we say and this right and I just press save and because it is live server so now the, as of now the clear everything is clear right if I click here why there is alert <laughs> console or so let me yeah you remember why there is an alert because the changes are coming from this right so let's just remove it uh, and delete all our rights because there was an override and now if I just press this button and now you see this red one shows one error one warning and one shows. okay so we're going to go to this you see on click event then you have you completed one x one two three exercise and then you say nested call then there is this right and if you look here uh, why it is uh, you know kind of not closed here is because if you look in the code this call is before this call so what i can do is maybe i can say it like this right you call it let, let's just see it as a group complete one so if i now click here so you see there are two groups so that's how we use this okay i think uh, one thing is remaining related to console is which is console.assert okay so that's like uh, um, how do we do is let's say we have uh, let let's say we have variable a is equal to 10 and uh, where b is equal to 20 right so now what you see is like uh, that you want to say that uh, um, c is equal to uh, b is less a is less than 10 a is less than b right it has these messages so now how you can use console dot assert is basically you want to pass the condition first condition is b a is less than b okay and then what do you say is that what is the data you say my data is a comma b right uh, comma c right and if this and you just execute it right and uh, if a is less than b this assert condition is true which is okay and if it is this assertion field because a is not greater than b so it logs the data also clear so it's like you are making some assertion a is less than b with this data if this assertion fails which in this case it has failed so now you can have that logs so you can use this console as a REPL you can code anything even if let's say I want to remove this for example this one right what I will do is I'll say copy JS path I can try it here only I can say dot remove result right same way if you want to uh, copy this path and you want to see what all methods are there you just press dot and you can see whether it is click and all and everything and here also you can have I'm just taking an example so that is also one so that's what we learn in this uh, lesson so maybe now we have 
understood fairly well elements, sources, console, and it's like a playground for us. And we can interact with the the on the code also. In fact, we can modify the values also during debugging. Now, next we'll look at networks. Then we'll look at uh, applications and the other tabs. So now we have understood about elements, source, console. Time now to understand and talk about network. Uh, so normally what happens is, so let me just clear everything and just do a refresh. And now if you look at this, when I when any website, anything which loads, there are a set of files which are appropriate. So you can see there is a style.css, my file, there is a WebSocket because of live server, there is a UI file, one that you can ignore. So these are the different files which are loaded and uh, so you can look at them for example if you look at click on this it tells you what is the request it is loading this what is the method get method status is green okay what was the res response header this was a header and then you can check in response also those code right and it can tell you what initiated it right and it also shows you how much time it took to load for example which you can see here also in the waterfall model right and the status also tells us that what is the status it is like 200 means everything is working fine right and in case you want to filter certain queries or certain files you want to see whether they are loaded or not you can for example filter it here using my or whatever filter you define for example if i say i want js files or js files another way of js file to be filtered is this one you see all js css1 css1 xhr is where you make ajax since we don't have any so that's why you don't see it but otherwise you know you can have these filters and if you want you can hide data url also as well as if you want you can block certain requests also for example if you right click here you say block request then it will come under block request okay and then if uh, if you do a right click you can save these requests also there's another function which is to which is like a recording network log stop and start for example, if I just stop it and I just say refresh, right, then it will not uh, log. Let me just clear it. So if I just say refresh, you can see there is no log coming because I've stopped network logging. And if I just enable it and do a refresh, you can see this. So where it is used is when normally what happens is your front end interacts with the back end, then you make those XHR requests. And those requests are normally you can track them here what requests are made for example let's just uh, maybe let's just open a uh, site name order.org order.org right and if i open this right and i do a reload let me do a reload okay and uh, now you can see there are so many requests being sent right so how do i filter so well, let's say i want to see what are the ajax requests sent so in this case, I don't see any. What are the JavaScript files? These are the JavaScript files because I need to debug and I might need to check them, right? What are the CSS files? You can see there's a bootstrap. So clearly it is using bootstrap. Are there any images? Yes, there are many images. Anything media? No. Fonts? Yes, these are. Talk? Anything? Yes, these are one. Web sockets? Any? There are no web sockets. And, and similarly, and you see this console also these error messages shows you something that okay there is some error some some file is missing or some font is missing right let's say if i just click here and i say um, reference library okay and if i just say no, let me just keep it all and let me just clear it okay and let's see what if i want to click this so now we can see there is a request which is being sent and if I just do an XHR, there's nothing. There is, if you just open it, it will tell you what kind of a request have gone. For example, there's a CSS one which has gone, anything JavaScript rated, and all those things. So basically, you can track. And in case if you look at this request, this request was sent to this place. Okay. And uh, what was the response? The same thing. Whatever you see here is you can see those values. So that's how normally we use networks is to check whatever is being loaded is there any file which is missing is there uh, is there any call which is not going through that's how which he uses for troubleshooting so now 
in our next lesson what we'll do is we'll we'll go through first is applications and then we'll go through other types so we have seen uh, element source console tab and network tab so far i think time now to talk about application tab so this is uh, the place where you actually see what uh, your local data is stored by the page for example local storage is like uh, if you open one session here and i open the same thing in next tab then the data has to, if data needs to be shared that is the local storage but as soon as you open a tab a session is opened and any data you want to just save for that session is stored in session storage this web sql db are typically in browser databases right the light one cookies is what all any cookies which are stored by the website you see that then you have cache and all so what we will see is how do we create this local storage or how do we read it and uh, one way for this is that uh, i write it here but since we now understood what is console so we will actually you know do it interactively in console for example if i click here i go to console and we have a global object local storage and uh, we will say local storage dot set item uh, name let's say i want to store the name right name is suppose nabeel okay and i let's say i want to store the same name in session storage also uh, okay so now if you go to the application tab you will see there is a name nabeed and there is name nabeed key value it's it stores like a key value and good thing is you can filter also you can delete a value also you can delete all right and in case you want to read it that is also not uh, very that's also very straightforward right so all you need to do is do get item then in the name in the in the value you pass the key so i want to see what is the name of it right and same you will go for this and you can delete also by using uh, uh, the move item so local storage remove item nabeed and if you see here this is gone but session is still there right so let me just store again the local one because i want to show you something uh, okay so now we have both name nabeed here as well as here let's see what happens if i just copy this open a new one right and if i open a the uh, window you will see here the local storage is there but session storage is not right and in case you want for example you can clear it from here if i say local storage clear all and if you see here and you go to local storage it is clear it's like a data which is shared across multiple tabs and session is local to it cookies uh, let's see we have a cookies no. so maybe let me open one one more uh, one more application so that you can see if we have any cookie or not let me just say uh, control shift i and you will see here in under application there are cookies right which is nothing but name value pair right and youtube this is like another one from where which we are getting the cookies right does it have any local storage yes it has these key field value which is storing locally like this one you can see and uh, youtube also locally some data related to youtube and then there is session storage nothing in related to session storage yes in youtube it has some session storage data so so that's how normally you know, you, when you want to understand is there any data which is locally stored or, or anything what value in it and you can interact with it using it so i hope it makes sense and uh, in our next video we'll cover the next tab okay so in our previous uh, previous lessons chapters whatever you call them we have understood elements sources console 
uh, network as well as applications. Now I think it makes sense to club uh, performance as well as lighthouse. So the overall intention is to you know study your website in all the perspectives, whether it is from accessibility, uh, performance wise, or how it will be to the user. So first, let's start with lighthouse, and all you need to do is what categories you want to check. Why I want to check its performance, progressive web app. It is not there, but let it. We, we want to run those checks also. SEO, ISO, I want accessibility, I want. And device, I want to check is, let's say, mobile. And all you need to do is just generate report. So it will kind of do an audit of this report, right? So you can see on the left hand side, uh, there is a, there is a mobile. It is trying to load on that mobile console, mobile, uh, the demo one, it is trying to load on that. Uh, now, hopefully, we'll get our report in terms of these categories. You can see our website is following 100% best practices, although one page. Uh, Performance-wise, there is 62%. And uh, OK, very good point I forgot to mention. Since we have not used incognito mode, the Chrome extension, which we have, have, have impacted it. Right. So let's do this one more time. Yes, I forgot that. So maybe we go to this. And uh, then I open again the same way the lighthouse, and I say generate report. Everything same options. Ah, because now you can see. Because it is a very simple single page, I, I was like, why in performance it is bad? Because there were extensions there. But now it is under, which is good. Best practice is under one page. As CO is we are down, accessibility also not good. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see metrics wise, time to interactive, and everything is green, green, green. There is a trace and there is a accessibility issues, right? Background and foreground do not have a sufficient contrast ratio. Then it tells you the different options of how do we fix it right or maybe on seo also it tells you there is no meta tag yes we did not provide it and all these things so that is one aspect it tells you talks about how your website is what is how does what are its how does it rate on different parameters now let's say i want to measure its performance if i do some actions right so if i just say record and i just say start I just want to click on these two, three, four times, right? And then I say stop. So it will also record during that time how our website is behaving. Good thing is you can set the, the network also, whether it is 3G, 4G, we have not set any. You can set what kind of a CPU also. And if you look at it, there are three parts to it. One is FPS, frame per second, and it is all good, which is very good because there is no less of a frames. There is no frame drop. CPU utilization is also good, not much, and it was also good. So if you look at here, the frames, there's almost it's just one frame per second idle frame. It's all green, right? It's good, so nothing bad. And if you just scroll up, you will see where your time is being. Most of the time is utilized in scripting, rendering, printing. Primarily, it is scripting because uh, we are clicking this button. There are logics being run, right? And you can have this. Uh, mm, not much here, bottom up, not much here. Even log also is empty. Okay, good. Because our website is a very basic one, so it doesn't have that. Let's do one more thing. Let's let's open Google.com. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is we'll delete this and uh, we'll delete this. And then we say generate a report on Google.com and we'll see. Do we have any issues or anything issue related to Google.com? You can access any site across these parameters and let's see how it behaves with Google. And it also provides you some tips also how you can increase your load time and you know can improve your performance. So let's see what score does Google get actually. Wow. <laughs> performance wise amazing. So I will say time to interact, total blocking time. What you can do is because it might have, I have already loaded a site here, so you can do multiple 
you can generate this report multiple times and to come up at a certain decisional and i think uh, remove one use sub. so it tells you where there is some unused javascript accessibility wise it is very good whatever is small small changes it tells you then best practices there is some font size or register those you can do pw it's not a pw search engine also it tells you so so there is always a room for improvement that's that's very important so lighthouse and performance is what we'll be used for so in our next one we will like to uh, look at uh, security and memory and then that will be like our end of the course so in this uh, last lesson we'll, we'll talk about briefly about uh, memory and security and in case you see don't see these tabs you can click here and go to more tools and you can choose from here so typically security is like what kind of certificates uh, our site has since it is not secured it doesn't use https it is http that's why you see this right for example if i open google.com right and uh, then I see the security tab. Let's just uh, let it open. Yeah. So now you will see here is a uh, little load, it's a bit slower, that it is a secure field, green. And you can also see the certificate also, what certificate is using, right? And you can download that also. And all the details are here. So that's the importance of this site, right? That's important. This security tab. You can view the certificates, settings, the sources. Everything is secured or not, right? And here it clearly shows it is non-secure, right? So now, uh, so we understand what happens in security tab. Let's maybe go to memory. So there, what happens is because this whole website contains so many JavaScript objects. Right. So those objects and strings, how much memory they are occupying, how much this DOM actually is occupying your memory, what what are detached of deck. So those things we can look here. So what you can do is you click here, you go to this memory tab, you click here on take snapshot, and then you just press uh, refresh. This number is increasing, right? So this increase is actually basically building the snapshots. And uh, okay, so here you now see all the relevant objects, window, document, everything. Shallow size is the current uh, memory size which has been occupied by the objects here is in strings, and retained is in case they're released, how much of it can be recovered. And distance is typically more of a like uh, you know, you store different memory areas, one is linked to two, two is linked to two, so how far those nodes are distant. And if I search on this in DOM. So here I don't see any uh, detached node. Detached nodes are like, for example, if you have a tree and then that uh, tree uh, has its leaf nodes. And if you delete the leaf nodes have reference to the tree, uh, but you delete the tree. So, but your leaf nodes reference still to the tree. So that's it. If they are like, they exist, but they're not part of the DOM, but they are occupying the memory. They are detached nodes. So in this case, we can see uh, we don't have those detached node at least, so which is good, right? And here, once you click on it, you can get the details, right? For example, for Google, if we um, run such snapshot, okay, and I just refresh it, I can click here around on the things. And same way, this other option is also kind of uh, this one is also like it, it draws a timeline also. Let it let it run. And plus you can filter from here. You can see the objects allocated this. Summary is like you can see statistics. For example, how much of it is code, strings, arrays. So typically system objects, how much of each memory is being used. Let it run. So now let's see. Uh, DOM detached DOM token list. You see this? So we have there are around. Uh, we see that there is some. There are some iframe elements for which we can have a detached token which exists, right? And you can click and find all the. So I believe we have covered most of these uh, important, very important tabs, and rest all. For example. Uh, 
you can uh, keep using them right whenever you you know you can refer them whenever you need for example network relations rendering right so so that's how normally uh, our our uh, journey of uh, prom developer tools or console comes to an end before that one more thing is if you want to run some commands for example you want to show console so you can directly show console and it moves towards it so this is like a command prompt which you can use so thank you so much for watching thank you everyone for making to the end of this course and i hope you learn something new something more out of this course feel free to provide your feedback ratings and happy to share it with your friends uh, what is next so the what is next is that uh, this is like a chrome we are into chrome so we might actually look into how do we develop an extension or is it possible to develop an extra tab our own one for example you see these right you might have a course on it so maybe you can also explore and once again thanks for watching keep sharing keep learning bye bye take care stay safe